I found the car in a ditch. Single person inside. He's unconscious. It's bitter and dead. There's blood and the hair on her hood, joined by the marks of large claws. She hit one of those things, and she must have hurt it pretty bad for it to run away while she's still alive. Good. I don't even know if it's the same one I'm looking for, but I hope it dies before finding anyone else. When I go to move the woman, I don't expect her to react. <gasps> her sudden movement makes me jump back. She doesn't know what she's doing, I think. Just clawing away at the seat belt that holds her seat in place before falling limp again. It reminds me of my girl and her restraints. And I can't help but hear the voice in my head. I push it from my mind. I have to move this woman and her car ain't about to go anywhere. She's not too big, but neither am I. Seat belt's stuck, but my knife gets through it quick enough. I put most of her weight on one side so I can still hold the rifle. At least we don't have far to go. <gasps> she wakes up on my couch. I'd hoped she wouldn't. She's afraid and she's asking a lot of questions. Where am I? Who are you? What's going on? It's okay. It's okay. You were in an accident near my home. I brought you in. I've already called for an ambulance, but it's hard to get them all the way out here, so it might take a while. In the meantime, they want you to stay calm and wait here. She looks confused. She probably ain't thinking straight. It could be good. Might keep her from asking too many questions. You... helped me? I don't remember. Yes, ma'am. I helped you. The ambulance will be here soon to make sure you're all right. Please, just make yourself comfortable. I'll do anything I can. That's... very kind. I can hear her skepticism. I really hoped she wouldn't wake up. Just a little while longer. Of course, ma'am. It's nothing. Just a little southern hospitality is all. You're welcome to anything you need. I'm out of food, I'm afraid, but I'll be happy to get you something to drink. No, that's okay. I just... What was that thing I had? That's the question I didn't want her to ask. But there's not much I can do. She must have seen it. And she'll know if I lie. Might as well see what she knows. You tell me. I don't know. It was an animal, I think. But it was big and stood like a person. Yeah. You got those around here? The way it came at my car. I thought it was going to kill me. It probably would have if you hadn't hit it first. Looked like you got it pretty good. So, what was it? That thing can't be human. No, I reckon it ain't. Ma'am... Maybe you should rest. Not spend all your time thinking about what you saw. How about I get you that drink? She eyes me cautiously. I try to come across as polite. Wilkman. But it's looking like this is gonna turn real bad real soon. I think I prefer to hear more about these scenes you've got around here. If it's all the same to you, Miss... She's reaching out for a name. I don't offer one. I don't ask for hers either. I'd rather not know. All right. If that's what you really want. It is. They're monsters, man. The kind of thing you tell your kids about to keep them from wandering off. They're big, hairy beasts that don't do much other than hunt, kill, and eat. It's not even their fault. It's instinct. Gotta eat, you know? And they'll almost always go after something living. Deer, maybe. But we don't have many of those around here anymore. People, too. That's why one came after your car. But you can't blame them. You get that? What's left of their humanity gets buried somewhere deep. It's just... Instinct. It's all they've got left. 
Humanity? You're telling me that thing I saw used to be human? Probably. That's what happens when you take a bite and get away. I've seen it. First, it's only certain nights. Then they go back to how they were. And then it's every night. And eventually, well, one night they don't turn back. She glances at the door and then back to me. Probably notices the sun is starting to go down. Possibilities must be running through her mind. When did you say that ambulance was coming? Ma'am, please just stay calm. I ain't one of them. We move at the same time. She goes for the door. I go for the rifle. I'm faster. I stand between her and the exit, my rifle at the ready. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to sit back down. I didn't want it to end up like this. You didn't call for help! Sit down. You're going to kill me, aren't you? Sit down now, or I shoot. She sits. Why are you doing this? I ain't what you think I am. I'm doing what I gotta do. Now are you entirely sure you don't want something to drink? I don't care if you're one of those things. You're a monster all the same. If you kill me, what makes this any different from what they do? What makes you any different? I know what I'm doing while I do it. And then, we wait. I don't let her move. The time passes. Gets a little darker. It's almost time. She yells something at me every few minutes. I try to stay polite. It don't mean anything. But it's all I got. I wish she hadn't woken up. We hear a thump from the other room. She knows she's almost out of time, so she makes her move. She tries to run. I hit her with a gun and knock her to the floor. This is the really bad part. I put the gun to her back and walk her to the other room. I have a kid! Please! I have a kid! So do I. I open the door and push her in. My girl sits there, chains holding her in place. She looks up to me with fear in her eyes, and my heart breaks just like it does every time. I don't want to do it, my little girl says. I know. I don't want it either, but we can't help it. I look at my rifle and hype myself for what I consider. How else could this end? But I know I can't do it. Now look at the woman. She's hardly moving. Just staring at my daughter. I think she understands. I'm sorry, I say. Even though it don't mean nothing. And then I close the door. I can't stand to watch the change another time. I hear the screams. And the pain. And I hope for the poor woman's sake, she don't live through this.